Hello, welcome to Switched On, Paul speaking, and welcome to a look at another new game on the Nintendo Switch. Do something slightly different today, and uh, we're going um, to just basically have a little playthrough of Dicey Dungeons, and uh, talk about it as well. So, a little bit more of a, of a casual play, we're just going to play through the, uh, the levels here, see how far we get, and I'll explain to you about the game as we go on. We've got some options, not much in the way of options, and sound, display and sound options, and language options. And this game is brought to you by Terry Kavanagh. Uh, he designed the game. And uh, anyone that knows sort of their indie games will know he's quite a, a, a big deal on the indie scene. He made the game V, 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 V. I don't never know how to pronounce that. Is it just one V or lots of Vs? But if you've played that before, same guy who did that. And uh, big thanks to Dana there, Dana Trebella, for sending me over a copy of this one to look at. So we're just going to say, we're just going to start again. From the top, and I'll explain to you about what this game's all about. But basically, going to play through it and see how we get on. So uh, there's six characters in the game that you can unlock uh, when you complete a run as a character. I played this on the PC, so uh, I'm quite well versed in this game. But this is uh, thankfully come to the Switch now. This has actually been out a little while, about a week. Came out on the 15th of December, and uh, in this, it's kind of like a game show. This is the host here, Lady Luck. And uh, you have to go through her ever-changing dungeons. Uh, you're a little dice. Or die. I'm going to get ruined, aren't I, in the comments again. What was the last game? Was it Tharsis, the, the last game on the Switch? That I got my die and my dice uh, all mixed up. So, so apologies for that. It'll probably, uh, it won't get much better. So these are the levels. These are all randomly generated. A little bit like um, Slay the Spire, I guess. But uh, not quite so much freedom in the choice as you go through the routes you kind of you're in these set levels but it as they get grander and bigger you do get a choice of uh, of how to get to the exit I mean we kind of got a choice here we can go straight to the exit take on this wolf puppy and get out the level or we can go and take on this space marine get the chest at the top and then come back and you know so we'd have to kill two enemies so I think we're gonna do that anyway we're gonna go to we'll do a fight first and then we'll explain a bit more about the mechanics as we go on. This game, by the way, will set you back. I don't think I did a price. $15 and uh, £13.49. There is a 10% uh, discount at the moment. So grab that while you can. Um, so this game's a dice game. You, uh, walk, you know, get, work through those sort of uh, branching paths. Coming across enemies like this. And you have to fight them. You start off with two dice. Or two die. Oh god. I'm never going to lift that down. Um, and you have these cards. So you've got these cards here in the middle of the screen. At the moment we've got a sword and a combat roll. These are randomly generated at the start of a game as well. So uh, on my other save game I've got a really good loadout right from the start which is really lucky. Uh, this one doesn't look so good. But the way you do this is the dice at the bottom of the screen have been rolled for us. And you basically place these dice onto these cards to take these actions. So for example here the sword we dropped a dice on here. Uh, we would do that amount of damage. So if we put the three on there, we would do three damage to the Space Marine. And you can see at the top of the screen there, he's got a, a health bar of 14 health. So his health will go down to 11. And we can use this combat roll here. We can re-roll a dice. We can do that three times. So for example, we want to get rid of that one really. So let's do that first. Let's do the combat roll. So we click A on that. You can choose which dice you want to re-roll. We're going to re-roll the one re-rolls to a four which is pretty good so do we stick with that I think we'll maybe try and re-roll a three and we've got a two so we're going backwards and we'll re-roll that one more time and we've got a two again so we kind of lost out there because it was a three um, so we've made that situation worse but we're only going to spend the four anyway so we're going to use the sword we're going to put the four in now and we do four damage to the space marine and uh, we've got a leftover die there. We've got the two left over. We're not going to use it. We're going to press X to end our turn. Before I do that, you can press up on the right stick, as it says at the top of the screen now, and view the uh, attacks that the enemy's got. So he's got a plasma cannon. Now that 20 on that red card there means that he has to total his dice up to 20, and then he'll fire his plasma cannon and do 10 damage. So he's not going to be able to do that in his first time. But what you will see him do is roll his dice, Put them on there to, to tick that 20 down 
and it'll probably take him a few turns, two or three turns, to get that down to zero, and then he can fire that and do 10 damage to us. The one, only last thing to say uh, at the moment, at this early stage, is at the bottom of the screen where we are, the warrior, we've got 24 health, but under that we've got a fury bar, and uh, that builds up and allows us to do a special move. The fury move that the warrior has actually allows him to take an action twice, which is quite useful if you've got some big attacks going on, but we'll see that again. So uh, we're going to press X to end our turn. And you see there the Space Marine rolled his die, puts them all on the red card, and he's ticked that down to 13. We get the same card, so we're going to do the same again. We're probably going to try and re-roll at 3, see if we can get a 6. Going backwards again. We need a 6, really. One last try. Uh, not much luck here with our dice rolls. Uh, we're going to do four damage again. And end the turn. He's roll, what is that, nine? So he still can't do the damage. And hopefully we can take him out here. Well, we've got a six. We just won't muck around. We'll play the six on the sword. Do six damage. Take his health down to zero. And we win that encounter. We get one coin and one XP. And you can see that bar in the middle there. We need two XP to go up to the next level. When you go up a level, you start getting more dice and more coins, other items. Really cool, but we're gonna take that. We're gonna go and open the chest and we get a shovel. So we do the dice worth of damage, but on a six, if we if we put a six in there, we also inflict weaken, which weakens the opponent's attack. So that's quite cool, we'll take that. When you're collecting these items of equipment, you can press Y at any time. You can see at the bottom there it says equipment. Press Y. And this is another really cool system. We've got uh, this area here where we're equipped. And these cards are different shapes. So if we take them out of our uh, equipped area. We seem to have lost the reroll, but I think that might, that's just a free card, I think. Um, so you can see we've got this like uh, three by two grid. And these cards are two by one. So they fit quite nicely there. So we could have one more two by one card or two one by ones. And they come in various shapes. So make makes you think about your loadout. When you start collecting these, and obviously they do different effects. For example, you can get fire, uh, ones that inflict fire damage. So, so for example, if you're fighting a snowman, you might want to swap out you know, your ice damage for fire damage for that level uh, you know, to do more damage to an enemy. But again, you'll see that as we go on. So let's go on to our next battle here against this wolf puppy. He's a level one enemy. Let's have a quick look, see what he does. You see there, the wolf puppy is strong against poison. We don't do any poison damage at the minute, but that's something to bear in mind. And his attack is a woof, woof, woof. Uh, if he rolls or scores an eight, so if he can count up, to, uh, total up to eight, he can do that attack, which will uh, give him a repeat the next action. And his wolf puppy bite. Now this is another interesting card. That he can do four damage to us, but he has to put an even dice in there. So two, four, or six has to are the only dice he can put in there to do that damage. Any other dice just won't work. So we've got our shovel now. We've got a six as well. So what we could do is use our weaken. So we're going to put the six in there. We're going to hit him for six damage and do weaken. Now if you hold down the L button, you can get a uh, little tool tip of what the different states effects does. So you can see they're weaken. Temporarily weakens random equipment and equip basically means equipment becomes less powerful. We've got a sword. We can do a five here, which will take him down to one damage. If you fancy being lucky, we could try and re-roll at five to a six, but I think given the luck we've had with re-rolls, we'll just do the five damage and end the turn. Didn't really get to do anything on that turn, so that's cool. And we're just going to hit him with our shovel for six damage. There we go. So an easy encounter. We level up. We're now level two, and our health goes up to four, or increased by four. And we get an extra dice. All we need to do now is head to the exit, and we go to the next floor, which will be slightly more, uh, slightly more nodes on it, as you can see. Slightly more things to do. So we've got this enemy here. Marshmallow, who looks like there's a little clue there in his icon. I mean, he's on fire, so you just expect that he would be kind of impervious to fire and do fire damage himself. We've got this mm, sneezy, not quite sure what he does. We've got a wizard up there, but basically, you're, you're sort of blocked. You, I can't move down to get that apple, which will just give us health, 
until we defeat this Sneezy. Or we can defeat this Marshmallow as a level 2. And we can get that chest up there. I think we'll do that. So his moves, he's got a Fireball. So it deals fire damage. And uh, whatever damage the, you know, whatever damage dice was put into the, uh, to the Fireball uh, card there. And again, it has to be an even. And then at the top, he can do ice damage as well. So if he puts an odd number dice in there only, he will do that much damage and also freeze one of our dice. And you'll see that happen, no doubt, in a second. So we've not got any new equipment. There are shops in the game. And as you saw, treasure chests. But we're going to have to stick with what we've got. Let's try re-rolling some of these twos. Our re-rolls are awful. It's getting worse. We need a six. Well, a four is okay. Uh, we could... Let's do four damage. And then let's do... We're going to do two damage here. But it will have the effect of weaken. Uh, of course it won't. It's only on a six, isn't it? A weaken. Right, let's try and re-roll that one. We'll probably get a minus dice. Uh, let's re-roll a three to a five. We might as well just re-roll one of these fours. And we get a six at last, so that's good. So we're going to do... Let's do five sword damage. And then we'll use that six to do six damage and inflict weaken. Does that make his attacks weaker? You can see our fury gauge is building up there. Basically, the more damage that you take, uh, the more that fury builds up. And you can see now, if you notice in the bottom left-hand corner, we've activated it and, it, and that little pop-up there said limit break. So a couple of things have happened. Let's just explain those. The uh, marshmallow attack has set one of our dice on fire, and we can't use that unless we spend two health to basically unlock it. So if you really, really need to use that dice, you can unlock it using the uh, using two of your health. And we've also got this fury. Hold down the R button. We can activate that. You can activate it anytime. You don't have to activate it straight away, but I think we, we just basically will because it will allow us to do the same action twice, which means as we've got a six there, we'll be able to do 12 damage, basically two lots of six sword damage, and that will take out the marshmallow. So we're gonna do that. And there we go, 12 damage. And we get 2 XP and a coin. So there you go, that's kind of the idea. We're going to keep playing this and keep chatting about it, but I just, I probably won't be stopping so much to, to offer too much in the way of explanation, because uh, the, the basic mechanics are, are basically what I've just run through. They just get a slightly more uh, sort of harder, harder enemies and more complex cards, but we'll discuss those as we go on. But we'll try and rattle through, see how far we get on this run. We've just found the bump card. As you can see, this is a, a smaller card. It's a one by one. So we can stick this in our uh, in our equipment. And this basically allows you to increase the a dice number by one or die number by one. And you see it's slotted in there to our equipment really nicely. We've got room for one more one by one card. So let's head back and let's take on this uh, Sneezy, whatever this is. Let's have a look. He's got three die. And he does a lot of different things, doesn't he? So let's have a quick look. He does a Sneeze, but he needs a double. So he needs to put in there two dice that are the same number. And if he does that, it reduces the countdown on all equipment by the number of die he puts in there. So if he puts two twos in now, he'll reduce the countdown on all equipment by two. And you can see his other damage weapon, uh, his other damage cards are all spikes by the look of it. So a six on those, or a, you know, a total of six, will do three damage. We've got our bump, and we've got three ones. What is going on with these die rolls? Right, it's a five. That's good. A five and a four. Okay, that's fine. Right, so what we can do is use bump and turn one of those fives into a six. And then we can use that six in shovel to do six damage and apply weaken to old Sneezy. And then we can just do five damage. And already he's down to 13. He's rolled three sixes. A very unlikely story. There you go. So, oh my goodness. That allowed him to unlock all of his attacks. I think they did three damage, didn't they? So he did basically... Uh, what did, has he got four of them? Yeah, so he's done 12 damage to us off the bat. It has unlocked our Fury, so we're going to activate that. 
and we will just do let's do two lots of six damage and then it doesn't really matter what other damage we do we just use the shovel to take him out get another coin two xp and we level up so we're now level three and maximum health's increased by four and we get a reward this time so we get a spiked shield now we need to put in a um, die into here but it can only be a maximum of five you know it up uh, one two three four or five we cannot put the six die in there and if we put an even die in there we do damage if we put an odd die in there we get that much as a shield which is a nice little card or and you can see that's a a two by one sort of size card to, for going into our equipment we can do a boomerang so we do two times the dice damage to the enemy but one times the dice damage to ourselves so when the boomerang comes back it basically hits us and uh, does the same amount of, or does uh, half the amount of damage to us I like this spike shield and then we're gonna take it but this is gonna cause us a slight problem because we've got no room for it now the bump is a really useful die uh, a really useful card as you can see on the last battle, we, we bumped up a 5 from a 6. The sword does damage, the possibility of doing 6 damage. Where the spike shield here could do a maximum of 5 damage. But also has the bonus of possibly letting us use a shield. I think I'm going to swap out the sword for the spike shield and see how that goes for our next encounter. We're going to fight this. Oh, actually, let's go and get... Well, we could we could get this apple here and heal... heal. But as we leveled up on the last uh, battle, our health was restored. So we're back up to 32 and we basically can't use that apple. So let's take on the level 2 wizard. He's got 28 health. He's got quite a lot of moves. He does a lot of spells as you'd expect for a wizard. He does a freeze spell, a poison, a teleport, a hall of mirrors, a thunder and a flame. It's worth taking a little bit of time and just uh, getting used to these spells because you might think of ways that you can mitigate them. But uh, for now, we will just crack on with what we've got. We've got this new spike shield. Can take a maximum of five. Actually, it can't do five damage, can it? Because it only does damage on an even number. So the highest even number um, die we could put in there is a four. So we can only do four. Let's do that. Let's do four damage. Let's bump up our five to a six. Let's re-roll this, this two, see if we can get... Actually, it doesn't really matter. We've got no uh, we've got no other cards we can use. We're just going to use the six to damage him for six and add weaken. We can't use that last die because we've got no more cards left. We're going to crack on and let's see what the wizard does here. He's only got one die, so he's going to be limited in what he can do, but his spells look pretty decent. So, we can also do shovel again. Another six damage and weaken him. Let's re-roll these die first, see what we get. Oh dear. And again, it's not very good, is it? Now then, we're going to use our bumps. We can bump up. We might as well just do that anyway because uh, we can't use the others. Oh, we're shocked. Temporarily disables random equipment. Can use a dice to unshock. Oh, I didn't notice that. See the, the status effect we've got on our left hand side there. I didn't notice that Bump was in shock. That was one of the wizard spells. And basically means we had to burn a dice to be able to unlock it. It's not too bad. We're okay. We've got to make a choice now on the spike shield. So we either bump that up to a 4. Which will make allow us to do 4 damage. Or we keep it as a 3. And get a shield of 3. Let's see how the shield works. Put that in there. End our turn. See what the wizard comes up with now. He's going to use a flame spell. Inflicts a burn two on us, if you notice in the bottom left hand corner. Which means two of our dice are on fire. And will cost us two health to unlock. Which we can do. Let's just see. Oh, we've got a six here. That's really cool. Hmm. Do six damage and weaken him. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna waste their health on unlocking the die. So he's rolled a five. So that lets him do. What was that? He's done. What was that one? He done a teleport spell. Dodge next attack. So he's gonna dodge our next attack. So let's do. 
a low scoring spike shield. He's going to dodge that. Then hopefully we can do a, uh, a shovel on him. If we can get a six. Roll a four. We're going to bump the five to a six. And we can do six damage to him. That will take him out. Get some more XP. Now we can go up to the shop here. Sometimes you can just go to the shop and spend money. Sometimes they will ask you to trade an item, so you give one of your items away for replacement of another item. So that's pretty cool. So we've got a boomerang game, which we was offered last time. A broadsword, which does the uh, amount of damage you drop in with a dice plus two. So that's quite powerful. And then a matchstick. So if we put an even die in there, it will burn one of the uh, enemy's die. So that's pretty good as well. We've got five coins. I'm going to take the matchstick, I think, because burn damage is always good against, especially against sort of ice enemies. So, on to level three. You can see there's only six floors before we get to the boss. So, where do we want to go here? We can do one fight and get straight to the exit. We can do some more fights and go to the upgrade station, which is at the bottom there, the anvil. Allow you to upgrade one of your abyss of equipment. There's another shop up there. There's a chest up here. But again, we can't get to it until we beat uh, Fireman here. Let's see if we can... This is probably not going to be a great strategy because it's not going to allow us to level up. I'm basically thinking of just fighting this enemy and getting to the exit. Let's see how that works out. So we've now got the matchstick as well. It's slotted into our equipment. Let's just re-roll and see what we get. Well, it's not great, but it's not too bad. We can use the bump bump the 5 to a 6 and straight away get a weaken on Dryad and we can only put an even dice into matchsticks that's a shame we're going to have to use the 3 on the shield and end our turn oh he's got poison slingshot so we've been poisoned so hold down L see what poison does so poison we lose 4 health at the start of a turn and it uh, pierces shields as well, so shields take no effect to that. So we need to shake that poison if we can. We have got fury available. Let's start with some re rolls. Okay, bit of an improvement. Let's burn one of his die. We can do that multiple times as well. Uh, what else can we do? Let's bump up that 4 to a 5. Yeah, I think I just burned another one of his die. Bam! Um, I don't think it really matters. We'll just do that. Could have used Fury there as well and done two lots of damage. So he's using his poison slingshot. Oh, that's a good dice roll for us. Uh, so he's Venus Flytrap. He does a die's worth of damage. And on a six, he can restore two health. So that's quite cool for him. I think he did that on the last turn. So we've got... Uh, this is a good time to use our Fury now. Because we're going to take him out. So we're going to do Shovel. That's going to do 12 damage. And then we can use Spike Shield here. We can... Can we use Spike Shield? Can't because the we can only use a maximum of five, and uh, the five will only do us a shield. Let's do that anyway, and then let's burn a die with our six. As you can see, once you get into the uh, once you get into the flow of it, these battles will go pretty quickly. It's only because I'm stopping to explain things. Uh, we can take him out now. We can just do the shovel. Take him out. We win. Get a coin. Two XP. So we can go straight to the exit. We're going to use this uh, apple to heal six health. health. And uh, I think we will just go straight to the exit. So you're probably better off going and fighting all the enemies, going toward the nodes. You know, you're going to get extra XP coins, maybe find rewards. But uh, we're just going to see how far we can get. Let's fight this Crystallina. You can see here by not going to the other nodes and fighting those enemies and leveling up, we're now a level three. 
and this Crystallina is a level 4. So this would be quite interesting to see how we get on. If you can hear it as well, you may also be enjoying the music. It's a really cool feature of this game. The music is Ace. Really funky music. Right, we're going to use the bump. We're going to bump the 5 to a 6. We're going to re-roll some of these lower dice. Okay, we got a 5. That's good. Should we risk re-rolling the 3? Ah, that's worth it. We've got a 4. Okay. It's got some good die here. So, we're going to do a shovel on the 6. That will give us weaken. I have to watch our health as well. We've only got basically half health. Uh, we're going to do... What are we going to do? What's he got? Crystallize. Create a random crystal weapon. He needs six to power that. Let's burn the die and let's shield ourselves. See how he gets on. So he's got six there. He's got. He's going to be able to activate a couple of those. And create himself some new weapons. That's quite a cool little character. Um, so. What we're going to do is bump the 5 to a 6 and we'll immediately use Shovel. Try and keep him weakened. Decent reroll to get a 5. Now we've got a 5 which is okay. But really we want an even die now to uh, use Matchstick. We get a 4, that's good. So we get to burn one of die. We use all our die. It's best obviously as you get more die to use them all. Dice. I don't know. Please don't pull me up on it. We've got Fury activated now, although he has burned one of our die. But we have got Fury. We're going to activate it when we, you know, when when you get a six and you get a chance to do big damage. It's definitely worth doing. We actually weakened him twice there, so that's good. We can spend two health to unburn that other die. Or we can... Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's just burn one of his diet. And we won't use our health. So I'm bopping away here. It's just cool music. Ah, oh, we were defeated. As I say, that's probably all down to that decision to just jump to the exit rather than going to grind against the other enemies and visit the shop and the chest and so on. Uh, which probably would have given us enough power to uh, to beat the uh, to beat that enemy there. But there we go. We've unlocked the thief. So a new character. You know, different abilities. Let's just have a quick look at that before we finish the video. I won't play through it again. I think you've seen enough of what this game's all about. I will say it's an excellent game. As I said, I played it before. I actually first saw this game back at EGX uh, 18 months or two years or so ago. Feels like a long while ago now with the way the world is at the moment but uh, they had a little stand there and I spoke to the guys there that were showing the game off for a little while it was PC only at that time and I was kind of there under the uh, under the guys that switched on obviously trying to you know convince them to bring it to switch and it was touch and go at the time but thankfully they have brought it to switch now uh, it seemed a decent bunch of guys and uh, I think it's the sort of game that fits the switch perfectly as I say I mentioned Tharsis earlier and there is a couple of other dice games on the switch as well uh, I really enjoy them Especially these kind of uh, roguelike games where you get different stuff. Let's have a look at the thief. He's got a dagger which allows him to do uh, a maximum of three damage. But he can you can do that multiple times. So if you had three dice and you rolled a one, a three and a four for example. You'd be able to use the one and the three to do two lots of damage. Also got a lock pick which is quite handy. There yeah, splits the dice in two. So if you've got a six... Drop it in there and you get two, three dice back, which you could then spend both of those on daggers. So you can see how the synergy works between these cards. And there we go. So that is uh, Dicey Dungeons, a really, really good game. Highly recommend it. Perfect time to get this and just chill out over Christmas with it. Really, really cool game massively recommended as i say so there you go let me know below what you think of this one hope you enjoyed a slightly longer playthrough let you get your uh, teeth into this one and uh, drop me a uh, thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and please subscribe if you're new be super appreciated and uh, i will catch you guys on the next video thanks everyone
see you again soon. Bye-bye.